Crisis is a first-person shooter video game developed by Crytek and published by Electronic Arts for Microsoft Windows and released in November 2007. It is the first game in the Crisis series. A separate game entitled Crisis Warhead was released on September 16, 2008, and follows similar events as Crisis but from a different narrative perspective. At the time Crisis was released, and years thereafter, it has been praised for its milestones in graphical design commensurate with high hardware requirements. The game is based in a future where a massive ancient alien-built structure has been discovered buried inside a mountain in the fictional Lingshan Islands, near the coast of the East Philippines. The single-player campaign has the player assume the role of U.S. Army Delta Force soldier Jake Dunn, referred to in-game by his callsign, Nomad. Nomad is armed with various futuristic weapons and equipment, most notably a nanosuit, which was inspired by the real-life military concept of Future Force Warrior. In Crisis, the player fights both North Korean and extraterrestrial enemies in various environments on and around the island. Topic: <laughs> Gameplay As with Crytek's previous game Far Cry, Crisis is a first-person shooter game with many ways to meet objectives. The player controls a Delta Force soldier codenamed Nomad. The player's weapons can be customized without pausing the flow of time, for example changing firing modes, changing scopes or adding sound suppressors. The player is also capable of selecting various modes in Nomad's military nano suit, which draw power from the suit's energy. When the suit's energy is depleted, no modes can be used and the player is more vulnerable to damage before the suit recharges. One of four modes can be selected, armor deflects damage and recharges the suit's energy faster, strength allows stronger hand-to-hand -hand combat, the ability to throw objects and enemies with deadly force, higher jumps, steadier aiming and reduced weapon recoil, speed increases running and swimming speed, as well as other forms of motion such as reloading weapons, and cloak, which renders Nomad almost completely invisible and suppresses movement noise. The suit's integral face mask has its own HUD, displaying typical data including a tactical map, health, current energy levels, and weapons information. The view is electronic in nature, shown in-game through things such as a booting readout and visual distortion during abnormal operation. A particularly useful utility is the binocular function, which allows the player to zoom in and electronically tag enemies and vehicles from afar, thereby tracking their movement on the tactical display. The player can engage enemies in a variety of ways, using stealth or aggression, bullets or non-lethal tranquilizers, ranged rifles or short-range weaponry, and so on. Enemy soldiers employ tactical maneuvers and work as squads. All soldiers will respond to noise caused by the player, including using signal flares to call for reinforcements. If the player has not been detected in the area, enemies will exhibit relaxed behavior, but if aware of the player they will draw weapons and become combative. Weapons The game features assault rifles, submachine guns, pistols, missile launchers, shotguns, miniguns, sniper rifles, gauss rifles or coil gun, the MOAC a machine gun-like alien weapon which fires high-velocity ice shards, and the TAC gun a handheld nuclear grenade launcher. Most weapons can be modified with attachments, these attachments may be given to the player by default, acquired from picked up weapons, or purchased in multiplayer. Attachment options are given a fair amount of leeway even if the end result may seem strange. For instance, a 4x, 10x sniper scope can be attached to the buckshot firing shotgun, though obviously there is no practical use for such a combination. Additionally, most weapons have multiple firing modes single, automatic fire and different ammo types, for example, the KPA's FY-71 can fire both conventional bullets as well as incendiary bullets, which increase damage. Crisis also incorporates some features that have appeared in other recent shooters such as accounting for already chambered rounds when a reload occurs. Vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> A large selection of vehicles are present, most of which are usable by the player. Available ground vehicles range from pickup trucks to tanks, while naval vessels range from motorboats to light military hovercraft. A larger patrol boat is available in custom-made multiplayer maps using the sandbox editor. 
All vehicles, including Humvees, pickup trucks, even tanks, have a turbo mode that can be activated via the shift key by default. The aircraft selection is limited to the North Korean attack helicopter and a fictional American VTOL each of which can transport six passengers and two crew. Crytek also included an amphibious APC, a wheeled version of the APC that can travel on water and land, although this vehicle was only available for those who pre-ordered the game. Damage modeling, although limited in vehicles, is most noticeable in the ability to burst tires, although wheeled vehicles can still move even if all the tires are gone, slowly rolling along on the rims. Tracked vehicles such as tanks or APCs can lose their tracks as a result of damage, but may continue moving even though there is no way for the drive sprockets to propel the vehicle. Exposed gas cans on Humvees can be shot in order to detonate their contents, which usually results in the explosion of the vehicle. While burning, destroyed vehicles will cause proximity heat damage to objects and characters. Unavailable vehicles shown in-game include jet aircraft, excavator, forklift and for reasons of scale, destroyers. None of the alien machines can be commandeered by players. The wheeled carts which would presumably be used to move aircraft or heavy vehicles, can also be moved by the player, but movement is very slow and useful for little more than entertainment and novelty. Topic: Multiplayer. Up to 32 players are supported in each multiplayer match in Crisis Multiplayer, which used the GameSpy network and required the user to have an existing user ID or otherwise create a new one. There are two different modes, each with six available maps: Instant Action, a deathmatch type mode, and Power Struggle, which is played by two opposing teams, each trying to destroy the other's headquarters. Power Struggle features the American Delta Force soldiers fighting the North Korean army. Both sides, however, have nanosuits. All players begin armed with only a pistol and a nanosuit. Weapons and vehicles can be found throughout the map, but generally must be bought by using prestige points which are earned by killing enemies or capturing buildings. The aim of Power Struggle is to destroy the enemy headquarters, a task which is achieved using nuclear weapons in the form of attack tank, attack launcher, or by using a singularity tank, which generates a temporary black hole in the target area. To gain access to nuclear or singularity weapons, the player must first capture the prototype facility which is used to make them, and then use the alien crash sites which feed the facility with energy necessary to build up enough energy to build weapons of mass destruction. One must earn prestige points, attained by killing enemies and taking over bunkers, power stations, and factories, to buy weapons and vehicles, including any of the aforementioned superweapons. Some of the weapons available in the game are machine guns, pistols, a shotgun, a precision rifle, ammo, a rocket launcher, explosives, and a Gauss rifle a sniper-type weapon able to kill another player in one shot. The advanced weapons available for purchase from the prototype factory aside from nuclear and singularity weapons require 50% energy. Weapons the player can buy are the handheld minigun, the MOAC which has infinite ammo and fires ice shards, and the MOR, which is an upgrade that can be attached to the MOAC causing it to fire a beam that will instantly freeze all enemies and some vehicles. Capture the Flag, originally planned to be included in the game, is no longer part of the game mode lineup, due to its similarity to Power Struggle. Even so, Jack Mamise, lead designer, stated that Crytek hopes that this mode will be developed by the modding community. Crytek CEO Savat Yerli also said that team action would not be included as a multiplayer mode, because players would gravitate towards either instant action, or power struggle. On April 14, 2014, Crytek announced that the multiplayer mode will be unplayable after GameSpy switches off its servers on May 30, 2014. Plot <laughs> <laughs> The game begins on August 7, 2020 when North Korean forces led by General Ri Chan Kyung take control of the Lingshan Islands. A team of American civilian archaeologists, led by Dr. Rosenthal, send out a distress call indicating that they have discovered something that could change the world. A week later, Delta Force's Raptor team, is dispatched to the islands, with the core mission of evacuating them and securing any valuable information that they have. 
The team consists of Nomad, Psycho, Aztec, Jester and Team Leader Prophet all under code names, they are outfitted with technologically advanced nanosuits, which help protect them from gunfire and explosions, as well as giving them superhuman strength and abilities. As they perform a high altitude jump onto one of the islands, an unknown flying entity disrupts the jump by smashing into Nomad, and the team is separated. The crash deactivates Nomad's nanosuit and destroys his parachute, but he is saved because he lands on water and his suit absorbs the impact of the landing. After he makes his way to shore, Prophet is able to reset Nomad's suit remotely, restoring its normal function. As Raptor team regroups after the jump, Aztec is killed by an unknown entity. When the team finds him, they discover that whatever killed him also killed and dismembered a nearby squad of KPA soldiers. The remaining members of Raptor team proceed with the mission. Along the way they discover the hostages' boat frozen on a hill near the coast of the island. They also get their first look at the aliens who have been attacking their team when a flying alien machine sneaks up on them and snatches Jester, killing him shortly thereafter. The first hostage the team rescues turns out to be a CIA agent who was sent to monitor Dr. Rosenthal's work. In the jungle, Nomad finds another hostage named Badowski dead with ice shards in his back as the KPA battle an alien machine nearby. After Nomad regroups with Prophet, Prophet is suddenly snatched by another flying machine, which flies away with him in its grasp. Shortly after, Nomad is contacted over the radio by Major Clarence Strickland of the American military asking if he wishes to abort the mission since most of his team has been killed or missing. Nomad refuses, saying that he can still complete the mission. Nomad makes his way to Dr. Rosenthal's research complex, where he has found a rare fossilized artifact predating humanity by two million years. The partially excavated artifact resembles one of the flying machines designated exosuits that has been attacking the team. Rosenthal also references other discoveries of similar artifacts in Afghanistan and Siberia, suggesting that the aliens have a global presence, and are not just confined to the island. While Rosenthal is running a scan on the artifact, it emits a powerful energy pulse that freezes him solid. Nomad's nanosuit is able to maintain his internal temperature, saving his life. Nomad then rendezvous with a VTOL, after eliminating a nanosuit equipped four-man KPA Special Forces team near the landing site. He notifies his superiors about this, because the U.S. military had hoped to prevent the Koreans from acquiring nanosuit technology. The U.S. military then begins a full-scale invasion of the island, led by Major Strickland. As the U.S. forces continue to the main excavation site, the central mountain on the island begins to fall apart, revealing a huge alien structure inside, which is nearly the size of the mountain itself. Nomad enters the excavation site at the mountain's base, but is captured by Kyong's men. Kyong deactivates Nomad's nanosuit, and Nomad watches, helpless, as Kyong shoots one of the hostages in the head and then detonates explosive charges to open the structure. An energy pulse emanates from the structure and kills Kyong's men. The pulse also reactivates Nomad's nanosuit. Kyong, also wearing a nanosuit, attacks Nomad, but Nomad is able to kill him. As the mountain continues to collapse, a VTOL evacuates the last hostage, Dr. Rosenthal's daughter Helena, but is unable to rescue Nomad. Nomad gets trapped and decides to continue into the alien structure. It soon turns into a zero gravity environment. Nomad uses his hydro thrusters to maneuver and encounters hostile, intelligent aliens. He also sees a possible invasion force consisting of many alien machines. Nomad manages to escape, but the structure creates a massive sphere of energy that freezes everything inside its structure to minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit minus 129 degrees Celsius. Once outside, Nomad is attacked by various alien machines before finding profit. Prophet was able to engineer a weapon using the alien's technology, the Molecular Accelerator Prophet's nanosuit malfunctions, requiring him to frequently stop and recharge using heat sources, such as the burning wrecks of military vehicles. The two leave the ice sphere and rescue Helena, whose VTOL has crashed. Prophet leaves with Helena on another VTOL. At the U.S. evacuation point, one of the last VTOLs rescues Nomad from an unstoppable quadrupedal alien exosuit. Just as the exosuit is about to destroy the VTOL, Major Strickland draws its attention by firing at it using a mounted machine gun and the exosuit kills Strickland instead. As they leave the island, the pilot is killed and the engines are damaged. 
Nomad flies the crippled VTOL back to the USS Constitution CVN-80 carrier strike group while fighting off aliens along the way. Once there, he meets up again with Psycho and is then debriefed by Admiral Richard Morrison who explains that a nuclear strike has been ordered against the ice sphere. Helena warns him that the aliens might absorb the energy, but the Admiral ignores her. Prophet flies a VTOL back to the island against orders. Despite Prophet's departure, the nuclear missile is launched at the ice sphere. The explosion causes the ice sphere to expand and prompts a massive alien counterattack. Nomad is ordered to repair one of the carrier's damaged nuclear reactors. The nanosuit is resistant to high levels of radiation, although prolonged exposure proves deadly. While Nomad is in the reactor room, Helena sends an experimental signal through Nomad's suit that causes several alien machines to absorb too much power and overload, destroying them. As Nomad returns to the flight deck, Admiral Morrison is killed and Nomad takes the prototype TAC cannon. On the flight deck, Nomad fights an alien exosuit similar to the one that killed Strickland. A massive alien warship then emerges from the sea, and Helena manages to deactivate its shields by sending a signal through Nomad's nanosuit. Nomad then uses the TAC cannon to destroy the alien warship, which crashes down onto the carrier and begins to sink it. Nomad runs across the flight deck and jumps off the carrier into the waiting VTOL, which is piloted by Psycho. As they fly away, Helena is nearly pulled out of the aircraft by the energy field created by the destroyed alien warship. The ship drags the Constitution beneath the surface and vaporizes, creating a massive vortex that engulfs and destroys the entire carrier fleet. Psycho then receives a transmission that there is another carrier strike group en route to the island and suggests meeting them. Nomad protests, claiming that since they now know how to defeat the aliens, they need to continue fighting. A transmission from Prophet, who is inside the energy field on the island, is then received. The VTOL is then seen turning around and heading back to the island. Development. Game engine Crisis uses Microsoft's API, Direct3D for graphics rendering, and includes the same editor that was used by Crytek to create the game. The game runs on a new engine, CryEngine 2, that is the successor to Far Cry's CryEngine. CryEngine 2 was among the first engines to use the Direct 3D 10, Direct X 10 framework of Windows Vista, but was designed primarily to run using Direct X 9, both on Vista and Windows XP. Roy Taylor, Vice President of Content Relations at Nvidia at the time, has spoken on the subject of the engine's complexity, stating that Crisis has over a million lines of code, 1 GB of texture data, 85,000 shaders, and nearly 3,000 pages of code. Crisis is often used as a benchmark in computer tests, as crisis at the highest settings and resolutions required processing power from computers that was unfeasible when it was first released. In its time, the game was so demanding on previous computer hardware that the catchphrase, "'Can it run crisis?' was frequently coined in relation to new or powerful computer hardware, even over a decade after the release of crisis. Demo. On August 27, 2007, Crytek announced a single-player demo would be released on September 25, however, the date was pushed back to October 26. The demo featured the entire first level, Contact, as well as the Sandbox Editor. On October 26, Crytek announced that the demo would be postponed for at least one more day and was released to the public on October 27. However, on many sites it was provided a day early, and an oversight allowed people to grab the file directly off an EA server earlier than intended. Shortly after the DMOS release some enthusiasts found that, by manipulating the configuration files, most of the very high graphics settings normally reserved for DX10 could be activated under DX9. The very high DX9 graphics mode looks almost identical to the DX10 mode, with certain graphical features not being able to be reproduced correctly under DX9, such as object motion blur. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Sandbox Editor. 
Crisis contains a level editor called Sandbox, much like Far Cry's, in which new levels can be created and edited. Such levels will have full support in all multiplayer modes. This will allow the player to easily build their own levels, seeing everything in real time within the editor. The player can also jump into the map they are working on at any time to test it. The editor is the same one that was used by Crytek to create the game, as stated in the README file accompanying Sandbox, Windows XP Professional X64 Edition or Windows Vista X64 are the only officially supported operating systems for running the editor. According to Crytek, using a 32-bit OS can lead to instabilities with production size levels due to the low amount of virtual memory available and is therefore not supported. Topic: <laughs> Console versions. In July 2011, it was revealed that both the ESRB and the equivalent Korean Ratings Board had rated the original Crisis for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. On September 8, 2011, a trailer with real-time in-game footage was released on Crytek's Twitter page. It showed brand new features for consoles including all new lighting, new effects and new nanosuit controls, fine-tuned combat and full stereoscopic 3D support. This version is download only. We are extremely proud of what we were able to accomplish with Crisis," said Crytek CEO Savat Yerli. We set out to create a next-generation FPS and delivered a PC experience that became a benchmark for quality and still is for many gamers even four years later. Quote, By bringing the single-player campaign to console, we believe we are again setting a new standard for quality in downloadable gaming," he added. However, unlike the original, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 versions of the game lack the online multiplayer component as well as the second-to-last campaign mission titled, Ascension. Also, neither Warhead nor Wars expansions are included. It was released on October 4, 2011. Marketing The limited or collector's edition of Crisis is called Special Edition. The three-disc Crisis Special Edition contains the following Steelbook casing not available in American version Crisis Game DVD Crisis Bonus Content DVD including Making of Crisis and Meet the Developers featurette Initial Crisis Concept Video Additional Key Trailers Showreel of original concept and production artwork High-resolution screenshots Storyboards A 28-page game manual A 16-page concept art booklet An exclusive in-game multiplayer amphibious APC vehicle Official soundtrack CD by composer Inan Zur the South African release also included an EA Crisis T-shirt. Topic: <inaudible> Crisis Warhead. Crisis was announced to be the first game in a trilogy by Crytek. Despite this, the next game released under the Crisis name was not the second chapter in the trilogy. Released for Microsoft Windows on September 16, 2008 in North America and September 19, 2008 in Europe, Crisis Warhead is a standalone expansion that allows the player to play the story told in the original Crisis, but this time from the viewpoint of SGT. Michael Sykes, also known as Psycho. The multiplayer element in Crisis Warhead is now called Crisis Wars. Reception Topic: Critical reception Upon its release, Crisis was met with critical acclaim. Review aggregator website Metacritic rated the PC version 91 one hundredths, the Xbox 360 version 81 one hundredths, and the PlayStation 3 version 81 one hundredths. The game was awarded a 98% in the PC Gamer US Holiday 2007 issue, making it one of the highest rated games ever in PC Gamer, tying with Half-Life 2 and Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. GameSpot awarded Crisis a score of 9.5 out of 10, describing it as, "...easily one of the greatest shooters ever made." 
GameSpy gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stating that the suit powers were fun but also criticizing the multiplayer portion of the game for not having a team deathmatch. X-Play gave it a 3 out of 5 on its ''Holiday Buyer's Guide'' special episode, praising the graphics and physics, but criticized the steep hardware requirements as well as stating that the game is overhyped with average gameplay. GamePro honored Crisis with a score of 4.75 out of 5, saying it was a great step forward for PC gaming", but criticized the steep hardware requirements. IGN awarded it a 9.4 out of 10, hailing it as, "...one of the more entertaining ballistic showdowns in quite some time." A retrospective review for bit-tech.net in June 2010 criticized the game for failing to deliver on its pre-release promise, saying that the art direction was, "...boring and monotonous," that the nanosuit was underwhelming and that the plot could be summarized as, Rescue these people who look to be being held captive by Koreans. Oh no, aliens. The review concluded by saying, Crisis was the epitome of style over substance. Sales According to the SIM Exchange, the NPD Group reported that Crisis moved 86,633 retail units in the first two weeks of its release in North America, but while it beat their expectations, the sales were considered disappointing overall. Two months later, on Electronic Arts Earnings Conference of the quarter, it was reported that Crisis had reached the 1 million units mark, and that it had exceeded their expectations. It received a silver. Sales award from the Entertainment and Leisure Software Publishers Association (ELSPA), indicating sales of at least 100,000 copies in the United Kingdom. On the other hand, Savat Yearly stated during an interview with PC Play in April 2008 that he was disappointed to see the game leading the charts in piracy, and because of that, his studio would not produce any more PC exclusives, as he believed a game such as Crisis would sell four to five times more copies if it was released on consoles. Die Welt likewise reported that piracy had left the game with disappointing sales by April. Piracy figures released by Torrentfreak indicate that Crisis was indeed one of the most pirated PC games of the year. In June 2008 Savat stated that while their hopes have not been met, the game has reached their real expectations and in August he added that despite its million budget the game has turned profitable for them. By May 2010 the game has sold over 3 million units and its standalone expansion about 1.5 million units making it one of the best-selling PC games of all time. Awards GameSpot awarded Crisis «Best Shooter» in its «Best of 2007» awards, saying that it was this open-ended, emergent gameplay the ability to let us tackle our challenges in whatever way we wished." They also awarded it with, "...best graphics, technical," and "...best PC game," stating that, "...the firefights in the game are beautiful to look at, but extremely intense affairs that force you to think quickly and reward you for doing so. It's a dynamic game, one that you can play several times to discover new things and to experiment with different approaches." PC Gamer awarded Crisis its "...game of the year," and "...action game of the year," in its March 2008, "...games of the year awards," issue. PC Gamer also remarked that Crisis has pushed PC gaming to a new plateau, marrying the most advanced graphics engine ever created with phenomenal gameplay. From the cinematic opening to credits to its cliffhanger ending, Crisis is mesmerizing. GameReactor gave Crisis a perfect 10, and awarded it with its best action game of 2007, saying that, the action genre is forever changed. IGN awarded Crisis its Editor's Choice Award, saying that the Halo 2 type ending wasn't enough to deter me from heartily recommending action fans pick this one up. <inaudible> Legacy At the time of its release, Crisis was one of the most computationally expensive games on then-current computer hardware, around the time that PCI Express started to become a standard for video cards. Because of the computational demand, the phrase, but can it run Crisis? 
became an Internet meme, questioning if personal computer systems with the best possible hardware could run the game at its maximum quality and resolution settings. The phrase was applied jokingly to non-gaming computers such as NASA mainframes to question if the computers were powerful enough to run the software. Future crisis games, which were co-developed for both personal computers and consoles, were more focused on good performance on all platforms, and had dropped some of the demanding rendering aspects of the game engine, thus making the "'But can it run crisis?' question moot. Sequels On May 30, 2009, Crytek announced the second chapter in the Crisis trilogy, which continued where the first game ended. Released on March 22, 2011, Crisis 2 was developed for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. In addition to seeking a United States trademark on the name Crisis, Crytek sought to trademark the names Crisis Wars, World in Crisis, and Crisis Warhead. On April 16, 2012, EA and Crytek officially announced that Crisis 3 was in development. The game was released in February 2013.